Drifting 2300 light years from Earth, there is a pulsar known as Lich. Discovered in 1990 using the Arecibo radio telescope, it's fairly unremarkable at first glance. With a mass of 1.4 solar masses and a spin of 9650 RPM. It's also very hot, with the surface temperature sitting around 28583 degrees Celsius or 51481 degrees Fahrenheit. The thing that made Lich interesting was the anomalies detected in its pulsation period. In 1992, the astronomer who first discovered the pulsar, Alexander Wallstein, and astronomer Dale Frail discovered the cause. Lich was not alone. It had planets. Poltergeist and Phobator. The two planets are both super-Earths, larger than Earth but smaller than Neptune. Poltergeist has a mass of roughly 4.3 Earth masses, with Phobator being roughly 3.9 Earth masses. Later, in 1994, a third planet was discovered orbiting Lich. The small world Draugr, with a mass of 0.020 Earths. What makes this system so important is they represent the first confirmed exoplanets discovered and the first pulsar planets discovered. Pulsars and neutron stars, in general, were not supposed to have planets. The formation of the pulsar would normally destroy any existing planets in orbit. This resulted in many different ideas on how the planets could exist and how they could exist as close as they do to Lich. Phobator, the furthest planet in the system, has an orbit of 0.46 AUs, close to the orbit of Mercury around Sol. So the planets could not be leftovers from before. Planets that close would have been destroyed during the formation of the pulsar. And further planets would have no known mechanism to move in so close to Lich and form such a tight grouping. It would seem there is only one scenario currently known that makes the most sense. Lich was formed by two white dwarfs merging one to three billion years ago. The two white dwarfs spiraled closer and closer until the smaller of the two was ripped apart and merged with the other. The merging white dwarfs gained so much mass they underwent core collapse into the fast-spinning pulsar Lich, leaving a dense ring of material in orbit. Being the remnants of a shredded white dwarf, the new accretion disk would be made of heavier elements such as carbon and oxygen. Over time, the material accreted into terrestrial planets, forming this odd system, including a possible asteroid belt. Draugr also holds the current distinction of being the smallest exoplanet known, being between the masses of Luna and Mars. So far, it seems planets around pulsars is rare, with only a handful of such systems known. But they do offer an interesting addition to planetary science, and this raises another question. The habitability of a planet depends on many factors, one of which being the lifetime of the system. A planet's habitability is often only as long-lived as its host star. When Sol dies, Earth dies. A pulsar will slow and stop being an active pulsar over millions or even billions of years and become an ordinary neutron star. Neutron stars can live for trillions of years, slowly cooling as they do. So, a planetary system around a pulsar or neutron star could theoretically be stable for trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years. That being said, for a planet to be close enough to one to be warmed by radiant heat, it would likely be tidally locked or destroyed. Moreover, the radiation environment would likely not make the surface of any pulsar planets habitable to life as we know it. That's not to say life couldn't exist here. If there are rocky planets with substantial amounts of water in an orbital resonance around the pulsar, tidal heating could create a subsurface ocean, protected from the radiation and in a stable system for immense spans of time. A gas giant with icy moons like Europa could exist without fear of being incinerated by a supernova for longer than the current age of the universe and far, far, far into the future. Exotic life may also exist on the surface of such planets, using the intense radiation as energy the same way plants use visible light here on Earth. Does this mean there could be life around Lich? Eh, it's hard to say. Draugr is the closest and warmest, likely only a few degrees below the freezing point of water. If it has internal heating and ices, it could have pockets of habitability. 
However, that assumes there is plentiful water in the system, which I am uncertain about. White dwarfs are mostly made of electron degenerate matter. When ripped apart, you will get heavy elements like oxygen and carbon, and a fair amount of hydrogen would be expected. So it's not impossible for there to have water in the lich system, but again, I can't say for sure. Poltergeist and Phobator are bigger, they would be expected to have more internal heating, so there's also that to consider. Judging by the planet's orbital distances, the surfaces would almost certainly be inhospitable, and without knowing the water content of the system, I can't make any real predictions. If I had to wager, I would say probably no, the planets are sterile dry rocks in a high radiation environment, but without all the facts, there's always hope. And there could be other pulsar systems with far better planets, captured planets, distant gas giants with moons, locally formed planets from the accretion of ripped apart main sequence stars. Pulsar planets are very interesting, and systems like Lich warrant more study. Who knows, maybe there is more to Draugr, Poltergeist, and Phobator than meets the eye. For now, Lich is a fascinating system, a system born out of the destruction of two dead stars. A corpse made from corpses.